Good evening. My name is Jeff Reichman, and you're watching Conversations with the Candidates, brought to you by the League of Women Voters of Houston Education Fund and Houston Media Source. Today, we're talking to candidates for the Houston Community College Board of Trustees. Um, we have some great questions to ask them, and we have a lot of them on deck here today. So uh, I'm just going to get right into it. Uh, our first candidate that we're talking to is uh, for position nine. It's David Jaroszewski. He has 40 years of experience with community colleges as an instructor, a department chair, and a dean. Uh, he is a member of the school law section of the State Bar of Texas and past president of PTOs at the elementary and high school levels. Welcome, David. Thank you, Jeff. Um, what are the three most critical issues facing Houston Community College and its Board of Trustees, and what will you do, if elected, to address them? The, um, I, I, I always started thinking that student success was the first one. Uh, we're doing a, a, a great job. When I say we, I'm talking about community colleges, because I've been involved in community college for 40 years. And over the past several decades, the focus of community college education has been on access, making sure that everybody has an equal chance to, to get that education, that higher education. And the community college is a, is a wonderful, wonderful uh, place to get higher education. It's, it's uh, the best education buy for the dollar. But we've, we've pretty much gotten the, the access piece. Uh, people are not being denied their education uh, because of circumstances or, or you know, other factors that we used to have to struggle with in the, in the past. We've, we've, we've figured out access. The problem is we're not graduating students. Uh, student success is, is uh, just absolutely terrible. And it's just not HCC, it's, it's all across the community colleges. Now, HCC, for example, um, only, it, it takes over four and a half years for the average HCC student to get their two-year degree, four and a half years. And when they do graduate with that 60-hour degree, They've accumulated 90 hours. I mean, that's a bunch of wasted time and a bunch of wasted money that they can't apply to their, to their degrees. And in the case of HCC, only 15% of the full-time students finish in three years. That's, that's unacceptable. So uh, we need to, when I say we, all community college, but particularly HCC, needs to foc uh, change its focus from access to, because we've got that down, to student success and student completion. Now, that's my, my first one. But, you know, I've, I've, I have a passion for student success. It's being overshadowed by other things that are going on the board. And so uh, with, with procurement, uh, the, the, the guilty plea by, and the misconduct by uh, a board trustee, um, you know, and it's, it's a systemic problem just not with HCC, but, but with uh, other boards here in town, uh, HISD, for example. And there's this attitude that we don't really need to worry about student success as much as vendor success. And uh, the culture just has to change. And I was just sickened when I saw the, uh, rather the guilty plea of, of uh, uh, the individual involved, uh, Chris Oliver. So uh, what do you believe to be the fundamental job of an HCC trustee, and how does it further the mission of, say, the community college as a whole? Well, the job of trustee is to, in a, in a, in a very straightforward way, it of course goes a little bit beyond this, but in a very straightforward way, the job of trustee is to hire a good uh, president or in our case, uh, chancellor. Mm -hmm. And then of course, to work with the chancellor to make sure that the funding is adequate to, to run a top-notch community college. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, the, these ethics problems that we continuously have are just distracting the board from its responsibilities and uh, keeping our focus away from the students. Um, we need, to, uh, we need to have a relationship on the board between the board and the administration so that the board 
let's the administration do their job. We have a uh, award-winning, nationally recognized procurement department at HCC. I was at the August meeting when they were recognized for, for their good work. And the board needs to just step back, get out of their way, and let, their, let them do their job with bids and procurements and working with vendors. Unfortunately, we've got candidates, one of, my, one of them is one of my opponents, who feels uh, that the board should be more involved with, with this process of, of uh, vetting contracts. And that's wrong. I mean, that, that, that is going to cause more problems than what we already have, and it's bad enough as it is. The only thing that will be gained by the board getting more involved like one of my, like Ms. Stallworth, uh, she wants the board to be more active. The only thing we're gonna gain is more nationally recognized trustees like Chris Oliver and Larry Marshall over at HISD. And that's the recognition we don't need. So uh, what can Houston Community College trustees do to make the board more transparent and make it, the HCC procurement process more accountable? Uh, what improvements are necessary to restore public trust? Okay, well, there, there we go. Uh, <laughs> we need to stay out of their way. You, you talk about public trust. Mm -hmm. The board has to trust the chancellor that we've hired. If we don't trust the chancellor and his team or her team, then why would we hire them? So the board needs to step back and trust the people that we hire. It's, it's as simple as that. So how can uh, you use technology and data to better communicate with citizens and students uh, as a trustee, as a, as a leader in this community? Of course, there's always social media. Social media is the big thing now. Um, the um, uh, younger uh, folk in our uh, population uh, are quite good at, at social media. And so that's how you connect. Uh, we use social media in the classroom. We, uh, there's no reason why we shouldn't be using uh, social media to, to communicate uh, with uh, everybody that we uh, deal with in our constituencies. Uh, but there's no substitute really for just getting out and being with folks. You know, one of the things I would like very, very much to do is to um, uh, network with the faith communities in the district and with the business communities in the in the district and uh, particularly the business communities that those those folks know the job skills that our students need and they are ideally situated to participate in the community college on our advisory committees I've been doing this for 40 years I've worked with advisory committees. I've worked with uh, uh, the career and technical educators at, at uh, a number of school districts, and I serve on the advisory committees on these on these uh, uh, at these school districts. And so, uh, it's just a matter of networking, getting uh, getting to know people and what their needs are. That's fantastic. Well, we have about 60 seconds left. All right. So if you'd like to address the voters at home and tell them uh, your name again and why you'd like to earn their vote on this election. Well, once again, I'm David Jaroszewski. I'm a candidate for, for the HCC. One of the things that uh, really bothered me when I started contemplating this race is that I looked at the current makeup of the board. And on the board, we've got three consultants. We've got a real estate agent. We've got a labor organizer, we've got a businessman, we've got a retired university professor, that's, that's a check, and we've got one self-described politician. No one on the board has any background in communication, uh, I'm sorry, in, in community college other than their service on the board. And so that's what I bring to the board. So well, thank, you, thank you, thank you, Jeff, for letting me be here. Absolutely, David. Thank you for joining us, and we'll be back with the next candidate in a moment.
Conversations with the Candidates brought to you by the League of Women Voters of Houston and uh, Houston Media Source. My name is Jeff Reichman and I'm here with Victoria Bryant who is running for position 5 for HCC Board of Trustees. Uh, Dr. Bryant is a registered pharmacist, entrepreneur and home health advocate. She is chairman of the World Chamber of Commerce Texas and serves on the boards of the Alta Altus Foundation, HISD's CTE District Advisory Council and HISD Nutrition Pack among others. Dr. Bryant has a doctor of pharmacy degree. Welcome, Victoria. It's Thank nice you to meet so you. much. Thank you. Well, we'll get right into it. What are the three most critical issues facing Houston Community College and its Board of Trustees, and what will you do to address them? Sure. I think the three most um, three issues that I would address are uh, transparency, um, financial um, stewardship, um, as well as student programs. And how I would address it is uh, we have to make sure that our boards um, abide by the laws that govern uh, HCC. I also think that there needs to be transparency in the financial um, you know, accountability. Um, and that means that we need to have an outside auditor to come in, especially now with all the issues that HCC is having with the board. And I think we need to expand some programs. Uh, Houston is the number one um, area for health care, the largest medical center in the world, and as well as oil and gas. So we need to extend those programs and ensure that our students are prepared for the workforce. That's great. So what do you believe uh, the job of a trustee to be and how does it further the HCC mission? Yes, I think the uh, Board of Trustees, our job if I get elected, mm -hmm. uh, the Board of Trustees, the job is to governance, is to work with uh, the chancellor as well as the administrative staff to ensure that the policies that are set by HCC are followed. Um, and, uh, you know, less, um, not so much with the management part. And I think right now, uh, Board of Trustees are trying to do both, doing the governance as well as the management part. And we need to have that separate. Okay. So what can Houston Community College trustees do to make the board more transparent and make the HCC procurement process more accountable? Uh, what improvements are necessary to restore public trust? Yes, so I think there are several ways. Um, the first part, again, like I said, is an outside auditor. I also think that, you know, for the a college to have uh, an attorney that represents the college as well as an attorney that represents the board. We need to delete that board attorney. We need to have um, work together to be able to to um, you know, to uh, to govern um, the the school system. We also uh, need to um, have stricter uh, guidelines and laws uh, in terms of violation. If, if there's a violation, we need to. Uh, ensure that that doesn't get continued. And I think in the last several years, it just keeps going on and on. Um, and, um, and those are some things that I think that we need to work on. Excellent. Um, how can you use as, a, as an HCC trustee technology and data to better communicate with citizens and students? Yes, technology and data, that's the, that's the, the new era of learning. Um, we need to make it to where even in, you know, different, uh, the classrooms, um, the way we learn today is different than we learned 20 years ago. Um, we need to incorporate new technology and we can do that by making sure that we put the right amount of funds into um, you know, new technology for our students. Mm. Um, maybe you can explain a little bit more about your background and why you'd like to run for this position. Yes, uh, so I've been a pharmacist uh, and now in the home care business for the last 14 years. Um, and a lot of my employees actually come from certificate programs, HCC as well as some of the other colleges. And um, I feel that um, I can contribute as a board member to increase um, and to raise awareness of some of the things that employers need. I also feel very strongly about education, um, and I am a product of HCC, University of Houston, as well as public education, high school and uh, middle school. And so uh, this is a way for me to give back. I serve on many boards, um, and it just happens that this board you have to campaign for. Uh, but uh, this is the foundation that that any student, anyone, can use to change the trajectory of their life 
as well as their family and their, their children. And so it's super important to me, and that's the reason why my parents uh, came here to the U.S. to be able to allow that opportunity for me and my brothers. That's fantastic. And we, we have uh, lots of time left, but uh, I'm just about out of questions. So is there, <laughs> is there anything else that you'd like to add about your campaign or about uh, your background to convince the voters at home that you, they've earned, you've earned their vote? Yes, um, so I've run a business for 14 years and I think I can bring that to the table as well as being in the healthcare profession. And like I said, you know, we have the largest medical center in the world and we need that diversity on the board. Uh, you know, not, not only, um, you know, the differences um, that, that we have already on the board, but I think I would bring that, uh, you know, segment to, to the table. As well as I'm very passionate, I think, um, and integrity is important to me and honesty is important to me. And we need to bring that back so that we can regain the public's trust. Mm -hmm. As well as I think, um, you know, making sure that the money goes to the right place and not wasting it. I think there's so much waste, uh, millions of dollars that are wasted at the board level. And it's just a shame that it's not getting to our students. Excellent. Well, thank you, Dr. Bryan, for joining us. We appreciate your time today. Thank you. And uh, we'll be right back with uh, the next candidate for HCC uh, Board of Trustees. Welcome back to Conversations with the Candidates, brought to you by the League of Women Voters of Houston Education Fund and Houston Media Source. My name is Jeff Reichman, and I'm here with uh, Daniel D.C. Caldwell. Uh, D.C. has experience as a sergeant in the Texas State Guard, the County Elections Department, and the Freer Independent School District. He is a pro bono volunteer with the NAACP Legal Redress Clinic and the Innocence Project. D.C. is a JD candidate at Texas Southern University and has a BS in Civil Engineering from Texas A&M University. Welcome to Conversations with the Candidates, D.C. Pleased to be here. Great. So we'll jump right into it. What are the three most critical issues facing Houston Community College and its Board of Trustees, and what will you do to address them? Well, when you sent that question out in the questionnaire, you asked the question differently. You asked the question currently, and I didn't respond to current issues. I responded to what are the most important issues that face every organization. So like every other organization, HCC has three issues to face, budget, schedule, and scope. HCC provides services to the community. Scope addresses what those services are. Budget addresses how HCC funds providing those services. And schedule has more to do with the rollout of programs. Uh, when are classes offered, what classes are offered, and how long does it take to complete a program at HCC? Because for the HCC students, the success of an HCC student is not defined as being an HCC student forever. The success of 
HCC student is defined as moving on to the next stage of their life when they've completed the program at HCC and got the education and skills necessary to uh, improve their life as well as contribute to the community, the world around them. All right, so uh, what do you believe to be the fundamental job of a trustee and how does it relate to the mission of HCC? Well, the Board of Trustees is a policy-making body. So the job of the trustees is to look at proposed policy changes that generally the administrative staff of the college, the full-time salaried folks, are going to propose. Meanwhile, the trustees should also be reviewing the policies that are already on the books to see what changes that they think should be made. So how could a trustee as a policymaker improve how HCC is managed? Well, the Board of Trustees also uh, approves the contracts to hire full-time personnel, the, the faculty and staff. So in some level, we can review who has been recommended for hire and say, yes, I agree that this person should be hired, or no, I think we should hire someone else. Uh, as well as, what was the hiring process they choose? What are the criteria for potential employees? We, we, the Board of Trustees can say, I don't like the uh, application for, form you're using. I, I want a wider pool of candidates, make the application shorter, and you know what, more people will apply. I don't like the kind of applicants that are making it through the process, so uh, add or change some of the questions. And that's just as far as hiring goes. Meanwhile, Board of Trustees sets guidelines for job descriptions. So what are the employees of the school's duties? The Board of Trustees approves programs with, within departments uh, do we want to offer a particular uh, associate's degree with a major in pick a, pick a field? There's a difference between nursing and nursing technology. There's a difference between engineering and engineering technology. H how much do we want to diversify? How much do we want to consolidate? The board, even if not directly, has a say in that. And then there are the informal roles and responsibilities of a trustee of interacting with the faculty, staff, and students to address problems that are brought to them. Just like le legislatures in the state legislature and in Congress, if a student or staff member has a complaint about their, their boss, their employer, they can go to the trustees for help. We, we as the Board of Trustees, are one of the various inst uh, groups that you would refer to as the complaint department. <laughs> when we have someone who comes to us and says <clears throat> that there's any kind of issue, I either I don't like how this course is being run or I'm having a hard time scheduling a room for my student organization. Trustees don't necessarily fix the problem, but trustees do get an answer to the question, mm. why? Mm. Yeah. We are in the role of forcing the administration to justify their actions, not to change their actions, but to make sure that they weren't arbitrary and capricious. Mm -hmm. now, that's a good segue into the next question, which is what can the Houston Community College trustees do to make the board more transparent and make H the HCC procurement process more accountable? Uh, what improvements are necessary to restore public trust? Well, <clears throat> in that procurement process, usually, 
when city councils and school boards, college boards, have ma large projects they're trying to do, they go through a, what I consider to be a bureaucratic process of bidding it out. Rather than going through the uh, market process that m most consumers are familiar with of saying that a given store, a provider, will do the job for oh so much. <clears throat> and <clears throat> when they bid it out, the person, the company that they bid it out to is guaranteed a certain amount of income. That's money already spent, now it's up to the administrative staff to make sure that the vendor that was chosen actually provides the services that were already paid for or that are or that the board has already committed to paying for whether or not they're even being provided. So I'm more interested in the uh, payment on delivery approach that you see in the market where you know what rather than bidding it out you can say that a particular vendor is offering a good deal. When they, when they get it done, mm -hmm. ask for an invoice. And, and then on that invoice, you can dispute whether or not they've earned their entire invoice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because just, as, just the way people may complain about their electric bill or their phone bill, <clears throat> if they don't think that their, their internet provider which charges them for data, has actually provided that service, they will call and complain and maybe get a discount. That's so, an after-the-fact discount. So I'm saying that make the purchase on a credit rather than on a commitment, where if it's worth buying, buy it. But if the price isn't what you th thought it would be, dispute the price at the tail end. Okay. Um, how can you use, as a HCC trustee, technology and data to better communicate with citizens and with students and faculty and members of the college ecosystem? Well, <clears throat> as a younger generation guy, I went to the HCC website and said, if I'm going to enroll in the class, what do, what's the information I want to find? I said, how about how much does it cost? So I looked under new students and couldn't find tuition and fees. So simply putting information in an intuitive location, because tuition and fees is posted on the website under parents, mm. under the parents of students. And there are non-traditional students, like myself, that would enroll, but won't enroll if we can't get our questions answered. And we can get our questions answered, but we shouldn't have to be really stubborn about browsing everything until we find our answers. So we can, you're kind of talking about metadata, how we can use gathering information from every site, visits, trends, to see about how to redesign it, or you can go from a simple, more of a marketing approach and saying, one, is it visually appealing, and two, if I'm trying to navigate through it, what's the information that I need? I know that there are far too many clicks to get information about the board members right now. So, so rather than ha having everything where you have to go multiple steps to find information, just put more information on a single page. <laughs> um, <clears throat> that <clears throat> might be done using uh, insets in into a page, but some of the pages have a, a, a social media tab where what are our latest tweets, and not everybody's even interested in that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The R RSS feed isn't what people are going to the website for. Mm -hmm. w while it might be attractive, it, 
it lacks utility. So focus more on um, simple utility. It, from the perspective of a new student, or even from a new faculty member, because the, those who have been working for the district for a long time already know the system. It's for the new employees and the new students that if you can make it intuitive for them, then it's just, then it's going to be just as user friendly for the people who've been there a long time and who might not have liked the way they've been doing it, but who knew how to navigate it anyhow. <laughs> so, so make it user friendly for the new students. That makes sense. So uh, we just have a couple of minutes left here. We've got three minutes left. Um, maybe you can tell the voters at home uh, why you want to run for this position and why you're uniquely qualified to earn their vote. Well, in deciding to run for the position, my good and sufficient reason for running was that I looked up how the incumbent voted, and I said I wouldn't vote quite the same way. And for me, that was enough to throw my hat in the ring. <laughs> I understand that being a trustee is basically a volunteer position. There's not a salary. But I've been a Boy Scout since I was a teenager. I <clears throat> was in the ROTC planning on military service. I <clears throat> enlisted in the Army and then was medically separated. So I then went to the Texas State Guard, which doesn't have the same uh, military entrance processing station uh, regulations. <clears throat> Being a member of the State Guard is a volunteer position. Mm -hmm. I'm interested, and always have been, in service to my community. Now, if they don't pick me, fine. I, as it were, simply find that I don't necessarily agree with every vote and every vote on the board. And f for me, that's enough. I I I'm not trying to be an agitator. I'm simply trying to s say that when my views don't exactly match, I want my representatives vote to match mine as closely as possible. That's great. That's a great reason for running for office. Well, Daniel, thank you so much for joining us here today, and uh, good luck on the campaign trail. And we'll be right back with the next candidate for HCC trustee. Blessings to you.
Welcome back to Conversations with the Candidates, brought to you by the League of Women Voters of Houston Education Fund and Houston Media Source. My name is Jeff Reichman, and I'm here with a, another candidate for Houston Community College Board of Trustees, uh, Dr. Carolyn Evans Shabazz. Dr. Evans Shabazz is an active community leader and a retired educator. She has served as the NAACP Houston Branch Secretary and Education Committee Chair. Uh, the treasurer of the Tier Wester Civic Association, it's a great neighborhood, as well as other community groups. Dr. Evans Shabazz uh, received a BA in political science from Texas Southern University and no, an MA. No, oh. Spelman. Oh, from Spelman, Spelman I apologize. College. That's okay. That's a, I stand corrected there. <laughs> That's all right. And an MA in psychology and a doctorate in education. Dr. Evans Shabazz, it's a pleasure to have you here. It's a pleasure to be here, Jeff. Thank you so very much. Oh, it's my pleasure. So uh, let's get right into it. Um, what are the three most critical issues facing Houston Community College and its board of trustees? And what will you do if elected to another term to address them? Okay. Um, it's kind of a twofold question, I guess. And um, I want to first say that, of course, we always have a a problem making sure that the students get all of the services that they need. Of course, we always have to make sure that there's adequate resources and, um, you know, let the word get out to students so that they can enroll. Enrollment is always uh, a concern, especially now after Harvey, because some people who perhaps had decided they were going to go to school because of circumstances now decided not to. But then I also found that there was, were students who decided to go uh, who, um, for some reason, enrolled in the college. In fact, I went over to uh, the central campus and kind of walked through and kind of watched some students and helped some students to be able to navigate the process. But um, as far as the board of trustees, of course, you know, we've, we've had that, that recent um, incident that was certainly in the news. And I think that the college has to regain the trust of the community because we are supposed to be good stewards of the taxpayer dollars and we're supposed to operate in integrity. And uh, unfortunately, you know, one of my colleagues, um, you know, fell from grace, so to speak. So, but when that happens, it becomes incumbent for the college to rebuild the trust of the community. Because certainly, who wants to go, going back to the enrollment piece, who necessarily wants to go to a college that, that is plagued with, with scandal? And so I think that we're going to have to um, do something in that area, certainly. And uh, we have to be more co cohesive mm -hmm. because I think that we can work better together if we have the same objectives. And of course, that objective should be to educate the students of the community. Mm -hmm. And um, the part I'll play in that, I, I pretty much do well with all of my colleagues. Some of them are a little challenging from time to time, but I'm a, I'm a people person. And I believe that uh, we have to know how to work together. And, and because if we don't work together, we'll never accomplish anything. And we have to do that. We have a responsibility to the city and to the students to be able to offer them a, a wonderful experience that ends in a career for them. Mm. And so if we're in battles with each other, certainly that could be quite challenging. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the, the part I can play in that is to try to remain, you know, focused on what we're there for. And, um, you know, try to still work with my colleagues regardless of, of whether we agree on positions or not. Mm -hmm. And so I, I really try to keep myself abreast of what's going on in regards to the industry and, and what's going on uh, in the academic arena mm -hmm. so that I can be a, a resource, so to speak, to my colleagues. That's great. And it's a good segue into the second question. Uh, I've been framing it as what do you believe the job of a trustee to be and how does it further the HCC mission? But maybe you can speak also to uh, the job of you as a trustee in the dynamic of the board and uh, how you serve. Okay. Well, first of all, I think we have to realize that we are a policy board and not a governing board, so to speak. In other words, we have hired a chancellor who has hired administration, and we certainly have to trust that. Um, of course, that doesn't mean that we turn a blind eye to anything that may not 
be above board, but, but since I've been there, I haven't seen the chance to operate in any other way than um, for the benefit of the school. Um, again, I, I stay abreast of, of, of cur current trends and what's needed. I really, because of my background as an NAACP education chair, I've had a lot of experience in the public schools because I think you have to understand where your students are coming from and, and the challenges that they have, uh, you know, to get there and what they need and what we need as a community. Now, I consider myself to be a person that I go all over the city. We have so many events. I reach out. I'm the trustee that if you get my business card, you get my phone number, mm -hmm. the one that's going to ring all the time. I don't think that as a public servant that you necessarily have to go to the board and wait for the board to, to contact me on Monday morning. I've had students to contact me for all sorts of things from um, getting back into the building so that they could get their assignment and such things of that nature. And so I, I consider that to be, I, I consider it to be an honor. It's a calling for me. It's something that I enjoy doing. and. Um, because I do understand the process coming from the uh, K through 12, I think that's a benefit. And so in speaking to that, a lot of communities are really concerned about the trades and certain things that have been taken out of the public schools. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that, and of course, being a policy board, I don't implement anything, but I do have the ear of the chancellor where I can talk to him and maybe make some suggestions because I have talked to him about homelessness, and because of that, he um, did reach out to the Star of Hope, where we're trying to do some things there. I also was the one that um, brought up the idea of the college using one of our facilities for the recent Harvey evacuees. It wasn't the building that I recommended, but they checked that one out and, and found another one that was a lot more um, appropriate for what we needed to do. And so I'm a community person and I understand the process of, of, you know, a student getting there and their challenges. And I'm a student success chairperson. And so I do deal with what, you know, this is the big term, wraparound services mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And so I am very involved in, in, in helping students who have homeless, uh, ho you know, insecurity as far as food and homelessness. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of, that's a lot of great work uh, that the trustees can do. Looking forward, um, what improvements are necessary to the board to be more transparent, to make the procurement process more accountable, and to regain the public trust? Well, first and foremost, I want to say my position regarding procurement. I think it should, should be uh, hands-off, so to speak, other than when we are asked to approve certain vendors. Um, I don't think that we should be involved in the process other than that. So I want to make that perfectly clear. Now, the procurement process that we have has actually been given awards. And I think that other than this particular scandal, which, you know, you can't regulate people and you can't make them operate in a certain manner, but you can yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, maybe the process needs to be, to be explained to the public so that they will understand that we're not the ones, you know, because people do approach you, mm -hmm. you know, and they'll say, oh, I have this, I have nothing to do with that, mm -hmm. you know, go to the website, follow the plan and do what you're told to do. Um, and then of course, after they have gone through the system of the point system by the various p persons that are on the committee, then it comes to us. Mm -hmm. And so, I think that, you know, that's something that we're going to have to be consistent with. And, and consistency, hopefully, will bring about the trust factor. But if you're not consistent, it's just like in any relationship. If you're not consistent, um, then there's reason for distrust. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, how can you use technology and data to better communicate with citizens, students, administrators, kind of the HCC community? Actually. We have on our website, there is a, uh, just a multitude of information that's available. Of course, 
Uh, we may have to tell people how to access it, you know, because everybody's at a different level technologically. Mm -hmm. But the information is there. You know, the agenda items, the procurement process, all of those things are there. And But, of course, you know, there are people that don't necessarily understand how to do it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, perhaps in the process of trying to regain the trust, maybe we need to offer some, communi some community meetings you know, to tell people this is how you do this and this is where the information is. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, and you know, I'm thinking that that, that would probably be, be very helpful uh, because a lot of times it's just that people don't understand. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when you don't understand, then, you know, then the process is like, ah, oh, something not right about that. Yeah. So I think it's incumbent on the college to do that, to, to show people what's actually there on the website so that they can access it. Excellent. So we have about a minute left. Um, maybe you can take that time to uh, make a case to the voters to earn your vote. <laughs> well, first and foremost, I do come with the uh, experience, the educational experience, um, my academic experience. But, but most of all, I'm a community person. I'm the one that if you tell me you need something or there's a problem, I'm going to make sure that it, that gets to the right person. Um, I am very, very interested in the communities in terms of the trades. And I know that, you know, a lot of people know about the uh, dual credit and the associate degrees, but we're at a real crisis in this city in particular, especially with the aftermath of Harvey. We're really going to have to help uh, the rebuilding helping the rebuilding of this city. And in doing that, we're going to have to help people to access the trades that are necessary. Well, I, I really want to, to maybe talk to the chancellor, uh, and he can take it to his team to see if it can be implemented. But I would like to see the communities, uh, the schools, to perhaps have uh, dual, well, associate degrees in trades. Mm -hmm where it used to be back in the day when you came out of high school, you could maybe go, because they had so many trades offered, you could go on and go to a job, but that's not happening now. And so I think that we're gonna have to fill the gap mm -hmm. regarding that, because I don't think the ISDs are going to do it. Uh, they took it out of the schools, but I think that it's gonna be incumbent for us as a community college to fulfill and bridge that need. Well, Dr. Evans Shabazz, thank you so much for joining us. This is, it's been a great interview. Um, we'll be right back with uh, another interview for HCC Ooh. Board of Trustees. Uh, thank you for watching. And thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Have a good
Welcome back. Uh, you're watching Conversations with the Candidates, brought to you by the League of Women Voters Houston Education Fund and Houston Media Source. We're here with our last but not least candidate for HCC uh, Board of Trustees for position nine, Prieta Vanderbilt Stallworth. Dr. Stallworth is a project management professional, small business owner, business consultant, and adjunct college professor. She has served as a member of the Rice University Black Alumni Board, a trustee of HCCS, and volunteered as a badge counselor for the Boy Scouts of America. Dr. Stallworth has a PhD in Christian education, an MBA, and degrees in engineering. Dr. Stallworth, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you. Thank Excellent. You. Let's jump right into it. What do you see as the three most critical issues facing Houston Community College and its Board of Trustees, and what will you do if you're elected to address them? I think the first issue is the ethics standard. Uh, when we uh, first started as a board, as a brand new board, that was one of the concerns of the nine. None of us had really had a lot of experience. I had no experience at, at the board level. So we decided that we wanted to do things in a transparent manner and above board. So we took on training through the Association of Governing Boards and the Association of Community College Trustees. These were excellent trainings for board members and we committed to staying with those trainings throughout our in individual seats. So I learned a lot when I went to those trainings and I've kept those uh, trainings and I've kept that understanding and I've also managed to incorporate it into my small business. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, so what are, what are the two other critical issues that you see facing? I really would like to see faculty and students have a stronger voice. Um, there is a, an overwhelmingly large contingent of adjunct faculty at Houston Community College. And adjunct faculty tends not to have a strong voice in a university setting. And I believe that we need to have that strong voice in, in order to keep the community college strong. I also know that students can really bring to the table a lot of understanding as stakeholders, the kinds of things that they need. Uh, the kinds of support issues that they need to have addressed. So I think having the, the students and the faculty work with the board to help us to understand how to help them, I think that's very important. And as a former adjunct faculty member at HCC, I'm a little biased. Mm -hmm. It's really important to me to see to make that happen. That's fantastic. Um, what do you believe the fundamental job of, a, of an HCC trustee to be, and how does it... Um, impact the mission of the university? Policy. We must understand that policy has to be adapted to make sure that we are following the corporate perspective of the, of the college. One of the things that I really liked about being on the first board is that we had to establish all of those things. So it required a lot of intimate contact, a lot of intimate conversation about exactly what we wanted the community college to be. And the vision and the mission tends to develop the policy for you. Once that mission and vision is established, then it's time to make sure that each policy statement that is crafted somehow connects to the mission and the vision and make sure that the mission and vision are carried out appropriately. Excellent. Uh, what can the Houston Community College trustees do to make the board more transparent and make the HCC procurement process more accountable? And what improvements are necessary to restore public trust? I think we need to look at policy, review all policies, and revise them. I think that procurement needs to to be crafted such that it, it's more in line with the federal standard of procurement. As a small business owner, I actually did the 8A um, uh, contract. And so the rules were very, very stringent. And so we did not have a broad brushstroke of how to adhere to the policy. The policies were very strict. And I think we need to look at that as a community college, particularly since we've had a lot of give and take, and of course it has brought the board to this level. So I think that if we look at the way that the federal government has established policy for doing contracting and procurement, I think that we can incorporate some of those standards into our current policy to make our policy stronger. That's excellent. Um, how can you use technology and data as an HCC trustee to better communicate with citizens, administration, faculty, the HCC community? Stakeholders, stakeholder relations. That's one of the PMP uh, mantras. We must establish our stakeholder relations. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, because I am um, president of Parents for Public Schools, we created a brief uh, survey and we wanted people to check off all of the things that they were interested in, the things that they thought the community 
community college should provide. So far, we've done a little under 400. Uh, I lost count of 400, so it may be longer. Mm. But it let us understand that <clears throat> for the most part, for every group we interacted with, they had the same understanding, that we needed more skills and trades labor. We needed more enrichment courses. We needed a better connectivity to K-12. And so I thought that it was, it was appropriate because nobody ever asked the stakeholders what they would like. And as a PMP, it was interesting to me, and as a professor that teaches statistics, mm -hmm. it was really interesting to me. So if we can go back out to the community, back out to the stakeholders and say, what would you like in your district community college? As you know, District 9 is a huge landmass. It goes from the far east to the far west. It goes from being primarily African American to being primarily international. And so you've got a lot of disconnect in terms of culture. Well, when you have a disconnect in terms of culture, one of the things you have to do is bring is bridge the cultures. Education is a wonderful bridge. And so to be able to do that, we need to know what is of interest to you as, as being educated and being uh, to be able to go back into the workforce. And so this education bridge is a wonderful way to bridge the gap between cultures. Houston Community College is a great bridge, and I'm very excited to see that it's time to grow again. That's fantastic. And we have just about one minute left. Uh, if you'd like, you can make a final uh, appeal to the voters at home. Well, I would like to say that college is for everyone. You hear this mantra, college is not for everybody. I beg to differ. Colleges for everyone. Houston Community College has so many avenues for anyone who is interested in the K-12 to the two-year to four-year, for the skills and trades laborer, as well as for the lifelong learner. We have the opportunity to build and strengthen the bridges that we have, and we have an opportunity to rebuild Houston. This is an exciting time for community college, and it is especially an exciting time for Houston Community College. I am ready to see it grow, and I'm ready to see stakeholders come back into the building so that we can explode like we once did in terms of population. Awesome. Well, Dr. Starworth, it's a pleasure to be here with you this evening, and thank you for joining us. And thank you at home for joining us through this rapid-fire interviews with the candidates. This has been Conversations with the Candidates, brought to you by the League of Women Voters of Houston Education Fund and Houston Media Source. We hope you join us next time. And remember, early voting's already started. Get out there and vote. Thanks for joining us this evening. Thank you.